Hey, welcome to the High With Us podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Martinez. Today, I have special guest, John Jackson, and special co-host, Anthony Gona with a yellow cup with a smiley face. He's here today representing, if you don't know John Jackson, in his bio that he left on my website, he says he's an exotic dancer. Exotic dancer. I did. Do not, do not, that's not what he does. Oh, I was going to say, I didn't realize you were still doing that. <laughs> I, I stopped when I lost the ponytail. Oh, man. The the mullet kind of faded, kind of faded. Dude, I, I used to have beautiful hair, beautiful hair. You would have been, you would have been jealous, Daniel. It's still oh. beautiful. What you, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, yeah, I used to have a beautiful, beautiful locks of hair, and finally cut it off. But anyway, I that's not why we. But that's not why we're here today. <laughs> I don't know if you cut it, but I mean, it's going. <laughs> Well, well, uh, good, yeah, well, well, good to see you guys. And first and foremost, y'all have built such a community with Hive Mind. You've done a phenomenal job of that. I've watched y'all grow since, I don't know about inception, but I've seen y'all grow. It's amazing to see the community brought together. I was honored to be, be able to spend a day with you all at the Hive House. I guess, I don't know if that's what it's called, but uh, at, at the Hive House. And the the people that you all brought together there, the speakers, the audience, everything, it was just perfect because the content was just flowing and flowing. The audience was engaged. They were getting massive value. And to be able then to for them to talk to the speakers and the people in attendance there, it was just great. I loved the size of it. It wasn't a you know 400 seat ballroom. I loved that. I'm actually going back to to the basics. you know I've uh, I've done many, many uh, three day events with 70, 100 people in the in the audience, big ballroom. The whole, you know, the stage, the lights, the cameras, the whole thing, you know, the smoke, <laughs> you know, all that stuff. And they're fun, but I did my last one in October of last year, 2022. And so I'm not doing another three-day event again because they're very, very, uh, they're a beating on the people doing the event because you sign that contract with that hotel or whatever, and you're on the hook for whatever it may be, six, yep. seven, eight, 10, 12, $15,000, whatever. Yep. And you're. And from that, from the time you sign that contract, you're worried about, will I get butts in the seats? Will I get butts in the seats? And then when they get to the event, will they sell? Will they sell? Can I sell them, you know, the, the upsell, the coaching, you know, whatever the product is that the, the person's selling and you don't know, and you don't know, and you're, it's very, very stressful. So not doing those again, I am going back to the basics though. And, I, and that's why I think it was phenomenal that I got to be part of uh, your event because my event, I'm doing an event, I don't know when this podcast will go out, but I'm doing an event in December, a, a three-day event. But I'm going back to what I loved, which was the boardroom, where there's eight people, eight people in a boardroom, and we're just unloading on them massive content. But it's more than the content and education. It's about the relationships they build. It's about how they get to really be immersed in our world and us in their world. And before they leave, they've got a business plan uh, to execute when they get home, cater to to them, where do they live, what's their work, what's their week like, what do they work a nine to five? Okay, let's craft that around, you know, around that work week. And so I'm really excited about that too. And you know, the the cost of the boardroom is not fifteen thousand dollars, you know. And I just love that that intimacy. And and that's what you all brought to the hive house was that intimacy, you know. So I loved it. I loved it. Hey man, we're glad that you came. Super, super appreciate you, man. And uh, you bought breakfast for everybody. So oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who did this? We didn't plan it. So that was super nice of you, man. Awesome gesture. Just you know, speaks to your character. We're glad that you came, man. It was cool to and then to, to go up there and and, uh, and and chat and make everybody laugh. That was awesome, dude. You brought an amazing energy. A lot of people mentioned you. Who was that guy? Who was that guy? So yeah, I think you, you carry <laughs> with you, man. show is sponsored by hive mind crm it is more than just a crm it is a real estate and business mastermind that comes with an all-in-one crm you can have unlimited websites and users you can call text rvm and email all in one user interface and you can set up custom automations for any type and multiple businesses 65 percent of companies start using a crm system within the first five years of business once implemented the hive mind will save you on marketing give you more time and make more money one of our users has 
had his first $100,000 month using our system in June. We want to see you automate and accelerate your business. Text us at 210-972-1842 for future meetings and, of course, to get our $1 course on how to make more than six figures on one land deal. You can schedule your free demo today at hivemindcrm.io. So I'm, I'm glad. I really am glad you made it, and I'm, I'm glad that you liked the event. I, I was telling Daniel, I really like the idea of like the the mansion mastermind as opposed to like the the room, right? Because we can run ads for three months or four months, and you run ten thousand dollars a month in ads or five thousand a month in ads, and yeah, you'll have three hundred strangers in the room, but you don't know what they do, what they're selling, where they came mm. from. But this room was filled up with people that came in organically, right? These are yeah. people that have been around the community for a long time. And I really like the value in that is that the people that are here wanted to be here because they've been following us and, and interacting with the community as opposed to like they saw a cold ad, you know, on Twitter or something. So really cool. I, I think even if we scaled it up, maybe just a, a bigger mansion, like 7,000, 10,000 square feet, and, and there's 150 people or 200 people, you still have that same level of intimacy, it makes for a different environment where people can lounge around on the couches, that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. it was just a really cool experience for us too, man. So I'm, I'm kind of glad you saw some value in that. Oh man, it was massive value, and and I'd be careful to make it bigger too quick, you know, because uh, you know you can fill that house quickly. I think with the audience that you have and what with what you all bring to the table, and especially now that people have been to that to that one, I don't know how many you had before. Man, those, you're going to get repeat people back in there, and so I think when you make it a little more exclusive, like it was, hey guys, we only have room for however many people, you know, it'll sell out fast and they know that they've got to get their seats and they know that just from the community, the value that it brings. And so I'd be a little bit careful about trying to go bigger too fast, which is interesting because Daniel and I were talking about my project coming up later this year, a podcast called Should I Scale? And some of the, uh, just the crazy dynamics and the crazy world that we live in as entrepreneurs, whether you're in real estate or anything uh, and how it affects us and how that affects, uh, how that affects the family, uh, particularly the spouses. Uh, really mm -hmm. interesting. Uh, yeah. So we can talk about uh, scaling if y'all want to. Some of the mistakes I've made, I'd be, I'll be very transparent there. Some of the lessons learned from trying to scale a business. And I think, uh, I don't mean to take over this whole <laughs> conversation no, you're, you're, here. You're good. You're good. Uh, he's, he's been in real estate for 20 years. So this, you could teach us something. And I think you'd teach your our listeners something too. So yeah, I, I, th I think we're no, all over. Kind of just yeah. free flow. Yeah, so I'll give a 30-second bio on me, then we'll kind of pick up the conversation on, on scaling. So I've been in the real estate business since 2003, uh, so 20 years as of, as of this recording, I guess. Uh, 20 years, just focus on lease options. After 05, became known as the Texas lease option guy. Still to this day, I'm the only guy that teaches lease, uh, lease options in Texas, and so even the uh, very, very, very well-known uh, educators will send their students to me to learn Texas lease options, or they'll even uh, come to my trainings, uh, which is flattering, to learn Texas lease options. I started training people in, I think, 2008, 2009, where I would charge, uh, what it was, $3,500, $4,000. People would come to my house, spend three days with me, and I would just give them the keys of the kingdom on my on my company, Leasing to Buy, which because we specialize in lease options. We've since, you know, uh, grown since then. We do a lot of seller finance uh, subject to, but I'm still known as the lease option guy. Even when I started training people, you know, going back a little bit to the scaling part, back in 2010, I had a number of people, <clears throat> I was on a, uh, many, many years ago, I was on a web, on a, a forum, a real estate forum, specifically for lease options. And I had a lot of people on there saying, man, I want you to train me. I want you to train me. You need to put on an event. I didn't know anything about putting on an event. So <laughs> I was like, okay. I, and I look back, I have no clue what my thought process was. All I knew is that all these people wanted to come to my, come to this, come to a training. I went to uh, the Hilton in South Lake, signed a contract for a, it wasn't a big ballroom, but it was a, you know, decent sized room. And I still remember that first training I ever did for a group of people. Nobody showed up. Not one. I don't know, looking back, how I expected to collect money from them. I had no payment portal. I had nothing. And I had a, a ballroom for myself for three days. The hotel felt so bad for me. They gave me a little bit of a discount. And uh, and I thought, oh, my God, 
I should just run around. I own this ballroom for three days. I should get a ball on 1942, run around naked, play 80s music, do whatever I want to do, because this bitch is mine for three days. <laughs> but but nobody showed up. And then one person showed up. Not one person showed up. Uh, uh, how did you do marketing or, or how were it was just through this forum? You were just advertising on an online forum and you were just you thought people were gonna show up and it just Yeah, because they said, Oh, we you know, we, we want to be there, we want to be there. And so they pushed me into doing this. But this is this is very important for your audience to listen to. Most people would have said, F this, I'm not doing this again. Yep. That's not how an entrepreneur thinks. Yeah. Or like, screw it, I'm gonna do it again. So I did it again, I think later that year. This goes back to 2010, and I had one person show up. So for three days, it was just me and that guy, you know, and he got one-on-one -on -one coaching from me and uh, for three days in a ballroom, <laughs> he sat on the front row, thankfully, <laughs> How many seats? but, How many but, oh, that, there was probably 40 seats in there. Man, that's incredible, dude. And yeah, one dude. person. Me and Daniel have had some very similar humbling experiences and I don't mean to cut you off. I'm just no. like, I, we know what it feels like. <laughs> Yeah, you, you get your head handed to you, and but you also get your ego handed to you, and that's a reality check, you know? So then I <clears throat> went back to the drawing board and did a boardroom, like what I'm doing in December. And we had, uh, I guess, eight, maybe 10 people, and they paid, at the time, $3,500 each to be in that boardroom. And of course, they got the keys to the kingdom, you know, nothing held back. And we all loaded up in my Ford Excursion diesel, went and looked at some houses, met with some sellers. So they got real life in the trench, you know, in the trenches uh, uh, experience. Then in um, 2013, I think, 2013, I think, or maybe 2014, some of the big boys, you know, in the you know, long time educational space found out about me. One of them in particular, I'm not, I'm not going to mention names, got me on stage and uh, wanted me to speak at uh, these events he was putting on, big events, you know, 300 people to uh, sell my, at the time I had a uh, $1,000 CD. Oh, wow. And for those, for the young people in the, in the, in the audience, that's a, it's a disc like this. It's flat <laughs> silver. We used to put audio on them. Reflects in the sunlight. It reflects in the sunlight. You can hang them from your mirror if you're really cool. If you got a, you know, 74 Monte Carlo, but <laughs> no offense, Anthony. He wanted me to come speak on his stage to sell my thousand dollar product. And I was like, oh my God, this is huge. This is going to be amazing. And well, what I didn't know is right before I was going to go up, they took a break. I was up, I was up in my hotel room getting all these CDs. Like, oh my God, I'm going to sell whatever, like 20 CDs or something out of this big crowd. And I thought, you know, I'm doing math in my head. Oh my God, it's $20,000. Even if I split it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But what I didn't know is... When I went up to my room, he told the audience that any anybody that bought his high ticket coaching package, however much it was, I don't know, but anybody that bought that got my stuff for free. I don't know this until I'm going back into the ballroom and this lady comes out and tells me, oh, hey, who's going to buy? She goes, oh, hey, uh, I know you're about to go on. I don't need to buy your stuff now. We just got it for free. I was like, you did what? So that was my first experience into the into the big guru world and I, I was not going to pay you your cut for your stuff he just added yours on as a freebie and didn't pay you yep oh, amazing dude that's another good kick in the pants yeah so that's a serious kick in the pants and uh when you talk about leaving there i didn't sell one i mean how could i he just yeah. gave it away for free yep but that's a kick in the teeth for sure but from that did a bigger event i don't know how many people are in that room probably 80 people there again, though, I'm paying for, I'm going all out at this nice hotel. I'm probably in it for $24,000, $25,000. No idea wow. if I'm going to have one sale or not. We ended up doing okay on that event. But, but yeah, that really leads into the whole idea of scaling a business, which I know we hadn't really, I hadn't planned on talking about on this podcast, but uh, since we we're waiting for uh, uh, Anthony over there to get his crap together, Buffy. Daniel and I were talking and about my project that I've got coming up this year. But that brings me into scaling. And, uh, you know, social media is, first of all, people have to understand the majority of what you see on social media is, is a lie. 
It's what mm -hmm. people want you to think. It's what people want you to believe about them. There's a saying that says, desperation screams, confidence whispers. So I want you to remember that when you're seeing people that you follow on social, where every post is about how great they are, bragging about their, you know, their the big checks and this and that. Let me tell you something. I know people that are <laughs> multi, 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 multi millionaires, right? Not one time will you see them ever post on social their credit score. <laughs> Not one time will you ever see an orthopedic surgeon brag on social media about how he did a, you know, a, a hip replacement. Why? That's their freaking job, guys. That's their freaking job. Another hip replacement, guys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just did another hip replacement. Boom, mic drop right now. Doesn't ring the same, right? Doesn't no, ring the same. It doesn't. It, it, so, so I say all that because you have to, you have to know how to filter what you see on social, and mm -hmm. and the big the big term right now is scaling or going big. Oh, I got to go big. I got to scale. Yes. And it's if you don't. If you've never even done a deal, you're not scaling shit. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing two or three deals a month, maybe, and you want to scale, you have to be very careful that you're not scaling chaos. How firm is that foundation that you've laid with your business? Where are the systems working? Where are they not working? And uh, Jerry Green, who is, I would recommend anybody follow Jerry Green. Jerry Green is a dear, dear friend of mine, and he's a guy that coaches and trains uh, some of the big operations that do 20, 30 deals a month. Well, you got to have systems for that. And if you don't have the right systems, the whole thing is going to implode. There's a, a, some great books I can recommend. One of them is uh, Atomic Habits. And it's saying, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Wow. Guys, that's powerful. That's powerful. You can write all the goals you want. But sh don't tell me your goals. Show me your systems, right? So last year, yeah, 2021, I was looking at what we grossed. Gross, guys, nobody gives a crap about gross. Gro and write this, write this shit down. Gross doesn't buy groceries. Ooh, I love that. So I was looking at my, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Anthony. That's a, that's a mic drop right there because it's like we do a deal and we we pulled in, I don't know, 300 grand, but we got 100 into it. It doesn't look as as good, right, on, on paper. Like, okay, so 30% of that, not profit, right? That was just like for the team. <laughs> yeah. Sounds, sounds cooler, but you have to pay agents, you have to pay surveys, engineers, but but they, they put up that gross check, right? And that, that's not exactly what came through the door. So you, yeah, exactly. And so you've got to be very careful about what are the actual numbers. So, so in 2021, at the end of 2020, sorry, at the end of 2021, I looked at what we made gross. Well, that we made that gross on the info product and coaching space with this little machine, but that little machine was held together with duct tape and Google Sheets. All right. So I thought, oh my God, if we made this, this little machine here, imagine if I had the right people in place. So I started hiring, doing what I was told to do by the experts, <clears throat> and nothing against them. I made my own mistakes. Yeah. I brought in the experts for the funnels, the copy, the creatives, Facebook ads, all the stuff. I don't run, I've never run Facebook ads before. So now, in order to get this new machine going, what happens to this other machine is eventually it dies because the leads are not going to this machine. They're going to this machine. So the income, the revenue that I was living off of, doing pretty well off of, it goes down. This machine finally kicks on, produces squat. Not just squat, but negative squat. Damn. So now I go from making you know X amount a month, even net, to now I'm losing 50,000 a month. There's 40 to 50,000 uh, a month in there that I'm losing. That's not off the top of this. That's negative. Damn. That I'm having to shell out. Yep. And as an entrepreneur, you know, we just we're ingrained to just keep pushing, keep pushing. This has got to work. This has got to work. This machine has to work. I've did I did everything that I was supposed to do. I did everything I was told to do. And when you're so when you're so deep in the weeds, you can't see the snakes. 
and I don't mean just snakes like bad people. You can't see what's about to bite you. Yeah. You got to get someone above to look down and say, hey, this isn't working. Or you got to do it yourself and say, what the hell is not working here? So I had to fire everybody. And like I said, I made so many mistakes. Uh, I didn't realize that this little machine I had built that was working pretty well, that accident, there's a saying called burn it down in business. That's where you burn it all down and start from fresh. I accidentally burned it down. Didn't even know I was doing it because I was so deep in the weeds. I couldn't see the snakes, right? And so I burned it down. What I should have done is replaced one component of this little machine at a time. Hey, let's let's bring in this component, just like if you're jacking with a car engine. Hey, let's not just replace everything. Let's let's. Uh, I'm not a engine guy, but hey, let's replace the uh, the spark plugs and the and the and the wires. You know, let's let's tune this up. Let's see how this works. Is it is it working well? Or are we losing horsepower somewhere? What's going on here? Get that dialed in. Get that machine going and say, okay, let's bring in this other component now, turbo booster or whatever it is. You know, let's yeah. see how, how does the engine react to that component I just brought on versus let's burn the whole damn thing down and stop that flow of income. So that's very important to scaling is replacing one component at a time. And where do you need to, where's the kinks in the hose on this other machine that you've built, right? Is it for real estate? Is it your dispo? What is that dispo like? How smooth is it? Where are things falling through the cracks? Get that dialed in. Now let's look at, because uh, most people think, let me, you know, let me bring in all these leads. Let me generate more leads, more leads, more leads. Well, dude, if you don't have the back end figured out, you're wasting all this money and throwing away all these leads that are literally falling through the cracks because you don't have the dispo worked out. Mm -hmm. Get that dispo worked out. All right. Now, do we need to bring on a TC person, transaction coordinator? Yes, no. How does that work? You see, you're replacing one part of the machine at a time, saying, how does this react? Okay. Now, let's bring in a TC. Let's see how this is working. Okay. Where are the gaps here? Where are things falling through the cracks? How can we streamline this so we've got that back end going, right? The exhaust of the engine, if you will. Yep. Then say, okay, now let's look at the front end. Where are my acquisition people sucking? Where are they where are they dropping leads? Where are they not doing the follow-up? Right? Get them dialed in. Who do I need to fire? Who's in the wrong seat? Uh, if you're if you're looking to bring someone on, I would highly recommend a psychological test. <laughs> That's not the right word, but uh, a profile <laughs> test, personality profile test, like uh predict predictive index is huge. Some people use the Colby test, but use the predictive index and say, are they even the right seat? You know, if someone's an introvert and a data person, that's not your acquisition person. You need someone that's an extrovert and isn't doesn't really know the data, but can but can have that conversation with sellers. Get the right people in the right seat. Then work on once you have that dialed in, then say, now let's start to crank up the leads a little bit. Let's see how this reacts. And now you're scaling. Because what I scaled last year was I was scaling chaos. And it was a and from that, I was telling uh, Daniel before he hopped on here, at some point I was sitting here at my desk, like almost in tears going, I don't know what I'm, I don't know what to do. I literally don't know what to do. And I, I thought, I got to write a book about this, uh, not about my own journey, about how do you scale a business? Now, I don't have all the answers, right? Uh, the answers are in people that have scaled successfully, unsuccessfully, and what lessons they learn. So I thought, I got to write a book about this. So in the the universe, literally, it was like it was an Ethernet cable into my into my cerebral cortex said, yes, you shall. And here's the name of the book. And I was like, oh, my God. I love the name of that book. So I sent it off to my graphics guy. What's that? Can we get the name? Yeah, it's called Should I Scale My Business or Slip My Wrist? Really? Yeah. I love it. I, I don't know. Love it. I don't know if you'll be able to. So I had my graphics guy create the cover to it. Yes. Seven steps to scale without bleeding out. So I had my graphics guy create a graphic for it to give me a visual, right? Give me that motivation. Yeah. And well, here we are a year and a half later. I haven't done anything with it. So I was talking to some idea. And this is how you can get, get down the rabbit holes. Yep. From this, from this book idea, 
I thought, well, I guess I'll do a podcast because I've got to get this information from people, other people. All the content for that book is not up here. It's in other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put it together. So I'll do a podcast. Well, then, long story short, <clears throat> conversations with uh, uh, people connected to A&E, uh, people with A&E were like, oh, this is, a, this is a TV show with your personality, John. So I said, yeah. Oh, my God. So now I'm going down this rabbit hole. So I thought, okay. So I did a I would call it a pre-pilot. I thought, okay, I'll go and interview, take a camera crew, go interview these people, right? Because my my uh, superpower is just jacking with people, you know. But be it through jacking with them, then being able to pull out, you, you know, you're content. An, you're an yeah. extractive information through conversation. Exactly. So we did a pre-pilot in L.A. with a guy that he actually licensed scratch-off lottery tickets. So if you've ever bought a if you've ever bought a lottery ticket that had Harley Davidson or or whatever on it, he is the guy that licensed those. Dang. So when I talk about people that I, I know people that are multi, multi, multi millionaires and they don't post the shit on social that, you know, some people do, that's what I'm talking about. They're in that wholesaling mobile homes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just I just flipped a septic septic tank and made 30 grand or you know, whatever. But <laughs> But from that, I realized, okay, I can't do this because it's costing, it would cost me out of my pocket about six grand per episode Yep. to fly the crew out there, do the editing, all the stuff, you know, the travel. I'm like, okay, I can't do this. So I kind of shelved it. And then I was talking to uh, Robert Allen, who's the guy that got me started in real estate with uh, the book, One Minute Millionaire, which I recommend everybody get that book and read it. I need to read it again, actually. Millionaire. One minute millionaire. It's it's a phenomenal. It's actually the book that got me started in real estate. And get this, uh, the, it's the same book that got Tim Mai started in real estate uh, back in 03. Wow. Um, so small world. So Robert Allen and I, the guy that wrote it, he wrote. He's he's known for no money down. He's got like who knows four or five New York Times bestsellers. I saw him in uh, Tampa, and we were talking. He was asking about the the book because I told him about it. Because he'd agreed to help me with it and write the forward to it. I said, well, you know, I've, we're doing this, doing this. So it'll probably be, you know, I got, I got to do a podcast. We'll probably, you know, sometime next year before I start the podcast, blah, blah, blah. And he said, no, no, you're going to start right now. So he, you know, we scheduled a uh, call for the next week. Got on Zoom with him. Uh, in the next four weeks, uh, I'll start a podcast called Should I Scale? And it's going to be about scaling businesses. And I'll bring on some amazing people outside of the real estate world about how do they scale their businesses? Uh, what, what do they do right? What do they do wrong? What's the psychology of scaling? I've got some amazing, oh my God, I'm so blessed to have my network. I do some amazing people that will provide the content for the podcast. From that will come the content for the book. And then I'll, and I'm super excited about it because it'll, it'll launch me into a whole other ecosphere of business. Not just mm -hmm. real estate, but business. People that operate at a higher frequency than I do, right? Get me in those rooms, right? Of of people that that have multi true multi multi million dollar businesses that are not real estate related, and I'm excited to see where that takes me. And you know, I don't care. What, I don't care what everybody you know that watches this thinks. I certainly believe in the power of the universe. And when the universe said, "Yeah, you're going to write a book," and here's the name of it, I'm a guy that writes copy and writes stuff all the time. I I couldn't have come up with a better name. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'm going to write this book then, you know? So <laughs> I love your name is freaking amazing. I think anybody in business, I think it'll resonate with them because they're going to go, oh my God, he speaks my lingua. He speaks my language, you know? It's not going to be your typical business book that's that could be, you know, boring and dry and oh my God, you know? Uh, it's going to be nitty gritty and just stories and great content. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Really excited about it. You know, I love it because right now in today's business environment, the people make you feel like if you don't scale, then you're doing something wrong, right? It's such a cheesy buzzword yeah. now. Yeah. You know, Daniel and myself, we've kind of been like low paced deals. Sometimes we're doing eight, 12 deals a year, something like that. And, and until recently, now we're getting contracts hand over fist. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until, you know, five years of just piecing deals together one at a time, one at a time, one at a time to where we got to a point to where we, and even right now, I don't think we're ready to scale, right? The way we upped our numbers is by just going after bigger properties. 
Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the only way if, if we did scale our numbers, it was just like the, the inbound capital based on having larger properties. But then you have larger uh, engineering costs, larger survey costs, yep. large earnest money. Right. So it's still one side is still heavy on, on the other side. So I think just scaling for this, for the sake of scaling, just so you could get on Facebook and say, hey, I did 40 deals this month. It's absolutely ridiculous and it's reckless. Uh, I, I would agree. And I would say for both of you on your own to look at. You know, what we've what I was just talking about. What are those actual metrics? What's working? What's not working? How does that dispo look? Right? Do we have that dialed in as we look to do bigger deals or scale to do more deals? What does that dispo look like? Do we have that dialed in very well? And let's take a hard look at it and look at where the kinks in the hoses. Let's fix that before we try to scale. Right? And and again, you know, nobody gives a shit about gross. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm really excited about it, about where it takes me. Something I, I, I love is, is psychology. Why do we think the way we do? And how do we think the way we do? And so I've, I dove heavy. I'll tell you where it actually started is, and I know we got a hard stop here in about 18 minutes for myself, because I've got another um, uh, uh, webinar to do. But I stopped drinking in May 25th, 2019. And so after I stopped drinking, I had a lot of time because <laughs> I had an ankle monitor on. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> you know, I, don't, you know, I don't mind telling my story if it helps one person. Because mm -hmm. I was a shit show. Because I, part of the shit show was was business related, you know? And so I dove heavy into uh, vodka, just about anything. But from that, <laughs> I dove into psychology. Mm -hmm. I wanted to find out what the hell was going on back then. Like, what the hell was going on? So I dove into psychology uh, pretty hard into... How do we think? Why do we think the way we do? What? How do we process our thoughts? Where is the ego involved in these decisions we make or the things we say and all of that? And AA, I think everybody needs a 12-step program, to be honest with you. Uh, AA, even if you don't drink, AA is based on psychology and processing your thoughts. And so that took me down uh, other paths of diving into, again, psychology, which Atomic Habits, the book Atomic Habits, Great book. 12 Week Year is a great book. I recommend everybody go online. I want you to Google the emotional cycle of change. The emotional cycle of change and Google that. That is a, a graph that a, a pair of psychiatrists actually put together back in the 70s. And it, it perfectly shows you how we are as entrepreneurs. We start off with any idea or project, the greatest idea we've ever had in business is the idea we just had. Oh my God, I'm going to do this and this. And the, blah, 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 blah. It's the greatest <laughs> thing ever, right? We have, un, we have uninformed optimism. Uninformed optimism. Then you start getting into it, and I'll relate this to, to real estate. Then you start getting into it and going, oh, you mean I got I to gotta call sellers? Now you've got, <laughs> now you got informed pessimism. So you start going down and you have enough informed pessimism for long enough, you go into what's called the valley of despair. It's at that valley of despair that you have a choice. You can go back and try to find another shiny object. Oh my God, I'm going to do land or I'm going to do self-storage or whatever that shiny object is that you happen to see on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Guess what happens when you start? Oh my God, it's the greatest thing ever. Now you start off again at uninformed optimism. Wow. And then you start learning, oh, you mean I can't just pull a list of self-storage owners like I did single family houses? Now you start going down into informed pessimism. But this cycle <laughs> continues over and over. I see it in coaching students. When you're in that valley of despair, that's the critical part. That's where the universe is testing you. And where you're you're being tested by yourself. And you've got to say, what are my systems? What's working? What's not working? And you start tweaking and adjusting and pushing through and pushing through. Now you have uh, informed optimism because now you've got information, you're getting some traction, and then you close your first deal. Now you got that shut up check. It doesn't matter. That first check, it could be $100. Doesn't matter. That first check is the most important check. But that, but the emotional cycle of change, everybody needs to see that. That's amazing, man. Yeah, I, I definitely want to look at that because I, I think we've all been there. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, I mean, I, I say this publicly all the time too. Like I get FOMO too. Like I love land. I think it's the easiest, coolest thing ever, but I'm like, Oh man, that guy has, he bought five self storages in a year and a half or two years. And this guy, he owns a hundred doors and we have zero. Yeah. You know, and I think about it, kinds of things and i'm like it makes me want to like venture off into something else but i'm glad that dan and myself have been stubborn and both crazy enough to stick with land and, and we're getting really damn good at it now right our first subdivide took us 12 months to complete we just completed one in 30 days right mm. but but after getting our teeth kicked in for five years right yeah. so and then it's those five years that nobody sees yep. yeah you know what people see people see the community that you have they see what you have not what you went through Right. They don't see that journey. I think as entrepreneurs, it's, and I don't do this enough, it's important to journal the journey. Yeah. One of the things I do that I do pretty consistently, but not enough, is, and I got this out of uh, Peaks. There's another great book called Peaks and Valleys. Another great book is The Gap and the Gain. One of the things I recommend is having a notebook, a little journal beside your bed. And every night, you write down three wins for the day. They could be so small, they don't yeah. have to be earth shattering. And then what would be three wins for the next day? That keeps your mind in the mindset of, of the gain, not the gap. Yeah. It keeps, keeps your mind on the peak, not the valley. Uh, and keep in mind, every every peak is another peak's valley. Yep. You know? Yeah. yeah. What this is, I guess, is uh, how, do you, how do you come back from such a big loss? Because I think all of us have faced big losses, and they only get bigger, like, like you're even alluding to now. Like, how, how how do you overcome that loss? Is it like seeking with your family and friends? Is it your mentors? Is it understanding yeah. understanding that, that is no, there's another peak beyond that? There's three on the stool of success. There's three legs, in my opinion. Those three legs are creativity, because creativity will always be recklessly used money, especially when it comes to marketing. Before you go drop 10 grand on a direct mail campaign, use creativity. So when when that shit hit the fan, I still have my creativity. Two, your sphere of influence, I mean your circle of friends, who who's your network? Who do I know? There's another great book, Who Not How. Who do I know that I can reach out to? That's why like I just brought this uh company on that I've got to call with in 10 minutes to help me. I felt like I've at this point I've got my I'm in fairly stable air but not quite but I knew I had to bring on someone else to see this, someone that could look up above and see the snakes that were going to bite me. So I brought on this, this company now to help me solidify that foundation. Where, where can we get, where can we use the organic leads I have? Where can we use my list, uh, social, et cetera? And within 45 days, really lay this, 45 and 90 days, lay this foundation properly. So again, going back to this tool, uh, creativity, the people in your sphere of influence, who do you know? And then three is if you're married is a, is a supporting spouse. Mm -hmm. And that's the tough one because you have very little control over that. You Man, if it wasn't, I, I would be a, a effing mess, dude. She just empowers me just to go out there and do it. Like she doesn't, she never doubts me. She never questions me. She just like, I know you're going to do it. You always do it. Like go for it. And, and she allows mm -hmm. me to work obnoxious amounts of hours. And she, that, that's probably, I probably owe her everything, man. Man, that's that's so great to hear. So great to hear because you know you don't always have a supporting spouse. I literally just got a text from someone today who was, had already paid for the boardroom, and he told me ahead of time, "I got to convince the wife. I got to convince the wife. <laughs> this isn't your this isn't your wife's journey. This isn't your <laughs> wife's dream." And and so I told him, I said, "I'd love to get on a Zoom call with you and your spouse. I'm not going to try to sell you to come to the boardroom. I want to talk to her about." In this case, his. I said, I want to talk to her about your journey. What is it she's afraid of? What are her fears? Where does she mm -hmm. doubt his ability to execute? Forget about wow. buying anything from me or going to the boardroom. Let's just dive into that. Because I asked him, I said, here's the thing. If your wife is a uh, is a dentist and she has to buy a, whatever, $20,000 piece of x-ray equipment or whatever for the practice, you're not going to scream at her and go, no, nope, we can't afford that right now, blah, blah, blah. You're not a dentist. That's her journey. That's her dream, not yours, right? So like in this guy's case, he was going to spend, very, we already paid, $2,500, come spend three days 
in a very intimate setting in a in a in a boardroom that's going to change the trajectory of his life forever because he's had a w2 all of his life he's put real estate on hold for 17 years because of his w2 and and i said real estate's not your wife's dream it's your dream so i'd love to have a conversation with her to talk to her about that you know not again not to sell her anything but just say you know whether he works with me or not you know i think it's important to have that spouse so without one of those three legs you're very very weakened very weakened so can we go over the, can we go over the three legs again yeah, yeah. creativity mm -hmm. uh, your sphere of influence I mean your circle of friends who do you know mm -hmm. and then a supporting spouse man that, that's everything right there that's everything because i feel like yep yeah, as far as creative goes i am that guy that wakes up with a brand new idea every single day yeah. but I, I probably a, an exceptionally good job at redirecting a lot of that into the same thing like how can i take this p piece of creativity and inject it back into what we're already doing and what we already know instead of veering off into something else yeah like i've so many times in my business career i don't want anybody to think that i got it right the first time i mean i've, I've probably had 20 or 25 companies or something on the way up here and, and non-companies where you just put a sign on the truck and go um but yeah but yeah having that supportive spouse for sure and then uh mm -hmm. our, our we pr i think i don't want to knock anybody right because i love everybody equally but i think our direct sphere of influence people like yourself i think we have the best friends on the whole entire planet like if our network never grew i'm happy with what we have it was yeah such amazing yeah. Owner, that, that love us and support us no, no, ab absolutely. And, and that's what's so great about your community that you've built and why, you know, why they support you so much. You've, you've poured your heart and soul into it for, you know, many years uh, with hive mind. And, uh, you know, that's, that's powerful, man. That's powerful. And think about the impact that y'all are having on other people's lives. You know, man, I just got a text yesterday. I'll send you the screenshot privately, but a girl on our team, she came on board about less than two months ago, man. And her life was not in an amazing place. She was crying when she called me and I told her, come on board. Let's see what we can do to help you. And now she's like one of our top sellers right now. And, uh, she, she sent me a screenshot yesterday. She said, I mean, she sent me a text. She said, man, I told my mom what I'm doing. And my mom started crying. She was like, she's so proud of me. And I was like, dude. And she was like, you, you really are changing people's lives. And it's like, man, we're just, we're just working, doing what we love. And to get messages like that, man, I was like, man, we didn't sign up for that. That's just bonus. I love it. I love it. As uh, as you were talking about that girl, it made me think of uh, when I did, when I did the three day events, and even in the boardroom, I I dive heavy into psychology. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a whole presentation I do on psychology and what uh, how we think and why we think the way we do. And I know we got to run here, but I'm going to leave you all in your audience with the six words that kill. Uh, this is something I came up with through my own journey. The six words that kill. When I say they kill, they kill dreams, aspirations. Uh, they kill really what could have been. And that is, yeah, but, what if, and if only. When I stopped drinking, the desire for alcohol didn't go away. So I had to be very, very in tune with this. What am I saying to myself when I'm not listening? That's the subconscious. Because it's always going. You, you don't shut it off. Yeah. So I took that. What got me sober? I took that, um, so that anytime I've had a thought or desire for alcohol, I'd go, "Whoa, what am I thinking? Okay, what's going on back here?" Mm -hmm. Right? I took that into the business world and realized that it came down to six words: "Yeah, but what if, if only?" Yeah, but it's just one drink, John. Yeah, but nobody's around, right? And so, as an example, so when you're looking to get into real estate or, or start a business or you're trying to get things going. You're going to have those six words because your subconscious is there. Your is there to protect you. You're going to get that all the time. Yeah, but I don't think about land. What if I make an offer and I don't have anybody to sell it to? Right. If only yeah. I knew what Daniel or Anthony know. Right. You're going to get these all the time. Shut that shit down and don't hesitate to stop what you're doing and say, "Okay, subconscious, I got a pen and paper. What the hell's your problem?" And write down what your fears are. What is your subconscious telling you? And when you lay it out on the piece of paper, a lot of times like, really? That's it? That's all you got? I'm out of here. I got shit to do. <laughs> Dude, this was an amazing conversation. I felt like we could have probably went for another full hour. Yeah. So we'll call this one part one. Because, okay. Uh, we definitely, we definitely got to have you back, man. Uh, I would I would love to go a little bit further down the, the that road with you on psychology. Um, where can people find you? Yeah. So uh, if they want to learn about my uh, lease option training, they, they can go to leaseoptionclasses.com, leaseoptionclasses.com.
a lot of good information there. If they want to see a, uh, it's about an hour long video of what we do, how we do it and the systems and everything. I've got another link there. It's called 16 K deals.com 16 K the number one, six K one, six, 16 K deals.com. We call it that because our normally our lowest uh, average on any deal nationwide is 16 K. So that's where the name came from. But there's a great video there about an hour long. People can just watch it, see what we do. They can get my stuff there if they want to. But yeah, 16kdeals.com. Got it. Thank you. Hey, do you got do you a hard stop in 60 seconds or do you have like two more minutes? I got about one minute. Okay, just a, one quote that you resonate with that you love. That I love? I'll one tell you a quote. powerful one. I'll tell you a powerful one. It came out of a book called The Veil. It's about a guy. Uh, your, your audience is going to go, what the hell is this guy talking about? It's about a guy. It's a as an autobiography about a guy that from an early age, he could see demons and angels. He could just see wow. them. And he said this, I want you to listen to this. Lies are the only weapon that demons have. Ooh, that gave me chills, bro. Wow. Boom. Lies are the only weapon that demons have. Think about that in your life, how that affects what you do, the actions you take, the things you say, the things you think. Woo! Dude, what a mic drop moment, dude. This is definitely part one was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> we let you get your day. Thank you for coming on here and hanging out with us, man. It means a lot. Hey, I appreciate it, man. Love you guys both. Love what you put together, man. Thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you, brothers. Thank you so much. Take care. So John Jackson just left. There was a lot to unpack right there. That was the greatest. We needed an hour easy. Yeah, and I think <laughs> I'm going to have to message him back again to get hop, hop on again because uh but the crazy thing about him is I messaged him probably about a year and a half ago to hop on the, hop on the podcast <laughs> and it never worked out. It never happened. And then he ends up coming to our event and then he's coming full circle a year and a half later. So it's kind of interesting, but the devil's only weapons is lies. Freaking Dude, crazy. That was a, that was a great, great, great quote because if you think about it, right. And, and we're not, we're, this is not a super religious channel, but I, I, I am religious. I think Daniel has an understanding of God and what God is. Um, we're Mexican, right? So we're typically raised Christian or Catholic. But man, that was strong. I don't care what you believe in, but the, yeah, the lies are the only weapons that demons have. That's pretty much what it is, right? Because it's somebody trying to manipulate, trying to hurt somebody, trying to get into something that they shouldn't be involved in. And uh, yeah, it, it does lead. There's a lot of deception, lots of fraud, lots of uh, trickery, trickery, tricking people. Wow. I mean, that's crazy because yeah, really, I mean, demon can't beat you up, right? <laughs> right? Not for the most part, but that's powerful, man. I got chills on my face when he when he said that quote. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody's quote do that before. One of the other crazy things too, and I think it was like like self reflection about him selling uh, him doing two events and only one person showing up the second time and nobody the first time. <laughs> I remember when we did our first year event, me and you, we signed that little dotted line for the for the hotel, and we're like, "Is anybody going to show up?" And we had that that doubt too. But to hear him, I mean, that's that's crazy. He did it twice. And only one person showed up <laughs> across the two. I don't it's, know. it's resilience too, man. Right? Because if that ever happened to to me, I feel like man, that that would have probably shut down my speaking career forever. Like I'm never throwing another event, and he just throws one immediately the same year again. Yeah. Right. And uh, now, then now to see how far he's come and how good of a speaker he is, and I wanted to see a little bit more of a of the charm that he brings because I've ne had never met him in person before. I saw him in Houston a few months ago. But I would see him always cracking jokes on Facebook. And on Facebook, it's a little bit easier to be witty because you got time to think about it and type it out. But this guy is so on point with the jokes and the comedy and, and the lightheartedness that he brings. Like, man, he could fill up any room with energy and electricity. So I wanted to draw a little bit of that, of that out of him. So that's why I was like, no, we're doing round two because uh, I think we need to have a closer look at him, man, and what he brings. He's amazing. He's a, such an amazing person. And again, man, it points to like, I don't know why all these cool people are want, want to be around the hive mind or they want to hang out and chat with us, but it really is humbling, man. It's super cool to know that there's people out there that are like that, that are kind of on our same wavelength. Super humbling, super amazing. 100%. And I mean, everybody go follow him. Go, He's doing some crazy things. And I think just being in his, in his, in his, uh, if you ever get a chance to meet him, you'll, you'll see, you'll see something about him real quick. And you don't have to, you don't have to like, you just watch him. You just watch him from a distance. You can see him work. <laughs> I told uh, 
I, I, I just told Daniel as soon as John hopped off, I was like, man, we got to get him on. We got to have him MC the next event because he brings that much electricity to the room. I feel like when we introduce our own speakers, we know them personally so we can give them a more appropriate introduction. But I think the trade off of having John uh, on staff with us, we can kind of give him everybody's quick bio for the intro, maybe, or maybe we'll do a co intro with him. But to have him on the MC on a mic can, can lift up any room, man. So I had never sat, seen him in person before. I seen him at Tim Wise's event in Houston. I went to go hang out with find Bridger for that fun lunch. He said he was going to be there for fun lunch talking at the event. I didn't even know it was a Tim Mai event. I walk in, see Tim Mai. He's like, oh, Anthony, what's up? Gives me a hug. And then I saw John in there and I was like, hey, dude, I didn't know you were going to be here. He goes, are you kidding? I'm the one running this shit show. <laughs> so, he's just that kind of guy, man. He's just super cool and funny. And I wanted you guys to be able to see more of that. So, you know, we're going to make this a, a, a dual episode. We have to. Well, you know what to do. Go like, share, subscribe. We'll see you in the next episode. We'll stay tuned for part two. Hopefully we'll bring you along for the ride. Thanks, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us, y'all. See you soon. Hey, guys. So the Hive Mind is launching a new program where we are we're helping you work deals that are valued at $1 million and up. If your deal is worth $980,000, we don't want to take a look at it. You can submit those deals to us at submitbigland.com, and we'll help you comp the deals. If it's good, we'll help you close it, and we'll also help you fund it and sell it. Check us out, submitbigland.com, milliondollarmastermind.com, and wholesaling million-dollar land deals on Facebook. Thanks, guys.